yeah and there there's there's a certain extent where I could be like, okay, you're just tolerating it, but it, there is a point where it's like they are accommodating it because, like for for example, those like it would write Christmas cards uh, to people, address them to people. Wally would put stamps on them and take them to the mailbox and mail them out to whoever they were addressed to. Like, <laughs> like That's it didn't just like dump them. It was just like no, they actually mailed them out to people. You know, um, but the, here's the, the thing, uh, right? Like you're he doesn't giving want his it, fucking house lit on fire. Well, and you're giving this thing power, right? Like you're putting these people put more energy and and mental thought in this thing than than like that's what i'm saying is like when you feed this thing it grows right and that's what it seems like it did like it it's maybe it's one of those things where it's like okay so say if it took on personalities and we're saying like that's just a pronounced personality at the time maybe when you give these kind of poltergeist things attention and they start to grow other spirits that are stuck in purgatory or let's say like that are just kicking around funneled to this like this beacon where they're like oh people are listening here like i gotta get in right and so it's like you have this like swarm of like paranormal activity of a bunch of different personalities vying for to get their message through back to the land of the living you know what i mean because they know this this is people are paying attention people are feeding and it's are and manifesting this portal or between realms here uh, that's kind of what i was thinking <laughs> uh so now <laughs> on the 10th of february and i think this is this is 1956 uh things took a weird turn weirder than they have been like i know everything's been weird up to this point but this is this is probably one how can it get any weirder (laughs) this is one of my favorite descriptions of of the accounts of of what went on during this is that apparently shirley started hearing a voice that was calling and it was a a specific name she said that was it was calling out natalie and then uh apparently an hour and a half later after that wally found a message that was written on the wall uh in the front room this this room that they referred to uh as the front room uh where apparently uh this is where shirley had moved like uh donald at some point had demanded that she move to the front room the front room was incidentally the Bigger nicest place the nicest nice room was her parents room <laughs> she took it over yeah <laughs> um, the master bedroom yeah i must take over the master with the walk-in and the ensuite um, I must. And Sorry. So this message that was scrawled on the wall uh, is spelled out, "I want Natalie." Um, after after them eating their evening meal, uh, apparently Shirley and uh, I think her friend uh, Doreen went into what they called Donald's room uh, to kind of uh, communicate with donald they were gonna call they called it they they started to refer to it as working the glass like because they used a wine glass in that circular. Uh, setup that we've talked about before they would use a wine glass at its ouija board um and then they found out that the the voice that was trying to communicate with them was claimed to be the spirit of james dean (laughs) what the 24 year old american film star who had died in a car crash in september of 1955 what would they ask him James Dean apparently would James Dean would uh, communicate with them for some time and he would be writing and then sometimes also tapping uh, and but apparently none of those original letters have survived uh, after this but um, it was said that uh, I think Chibbit like Chibs took uh, like he managed to get his hands on some of the correspondence that was claimed to have been written out by the the James Dean personification and what did it say don't drive Porsches right yeah. um it, it, like they, he said that the, the 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 handwriting by the Donald and the handwriting the by J, by James Dean seem to be different, right? Um, there's also there's also like an account of like an interaction between two, like the Donald talking about like the Donald only knew how to write; he didn't know how to work a typewriter. So, but he would he would talk about James Dean as they were like cohabitating uh, in Shirley's and Shirley's body and being like he's teaching me how to type how to work the typewriter (laughs) well it's like like i said it kind of seems like it's like this is just an opening and everything at this point is trying to get through right like that's kind of what it feels like because you're like oh now it's fucking louis the 17th now it now it's james dean right like it it just seems like pandemonium in the spirit realm of of things trying to get through (laughs) 
so you would have these strange events that would go on and on and like we said in 12 years and so finally i guess you could say on the 25th of august uh, 1963 uh chibit received a letter from donald um which they had always been corresponding essentially um and this letter revealed that shirley who is now 22 uh, was in love and that she had started seeing a man by the name of Derek, and Donald said that he wished the couple well. Now, the the, the strange thing is, is that Shirley had had relationships before this. Like he, she had had, she had had uh, other suitors, uh, uh, but they had all kind of ran off. You know, either either ran off by Donald. Yeah, or I the couldn't idea of that kind of stuff Donald. going on. She hadn't really had any success, you know, success and in, in relationships up until this point. But um, apparently, she had met this this Derek, um, and they had hit it off. I guess they had went on some time. They, it was kind of a nice story where they they apparently went on a double date with like different. <laughs> they went on a double date, but it wasn't. With they weren't double the date dates. with different poltergeists. They were both possessed by poltergeists. And... No, they went on double dates with like different people, but they found out that they were more compatible than the people they had went on the date with. So then they ended oh, up yeah, meeting yeah, and yeah. hanging out and then being whatever. So <laughs> the the one the the best part of this story is that um, like it got it got serious, and they you know um, and the family felt that. It was serious enough that they had to mention Donald, and I feel like this is just a weird conversation you have to have. They're like, okay, Shirley, are you, are you? Do you really like Derek? Do you really want? Because we're gonna have to tell him. Have you told Derek about Donald? We're gonna have to tell him about Donald. <laughs> like, I feel like that would be a fun conversation to sit on. Here's the thing, that. though: is you don't listen. You're you're growing up. You're getting old. You're gonna move out. You meet somebody. You don't. That's your first fucking mistake. She could have nipped this shit in the bud right away. She could have just looked at him and been like, "Listen, Donnie." Don't stress out. Pull the deadbeat dad. I'm going to buy a pack of smokes. I'll be back. Don't wait. You know what? Even better. I'll be back when the when the angels win the pennant. All right? That's when I'll be fucking back. All right? So you just stick around and you wait. I'll be right fucking back. And then you just leave. And that fucking poltergeist stays there. And fucking bingo, bango, bongo. Pulte, gonzo. Um, but by all accounts, though, when they told Derek, like, Derek had no idea how to react. Because I don't know how you would. You'd be like, our daughter... We we love her, but she is also oh. possessed by the demon of a of a six of a Louis the fifteenth former king. I guess would be current king. He knows what's France. up. Crazy girls are the best. <laughs> Crazy girls are the best. Uh, and and you know he also kind of I guess he went on for a while just believing that it was a joke. Like he like there was there was a period where he he just thought that there was some kind of weird joke that was going on. But when he realized that this was something that he was just going to live with, he just said. Okay, he just seemed to accept right. it um, for the sake of Shirley or, or their relationship, um, which is kind of nice. And they, um, you know, they went to go on and by all accounts live happily ever after. Right. After they paid no more mind to it. And this thing shriveled and died. Well, not well, exactly. Not necessarily, though. <laughs> apparently she had another encounter in 1980 Ooh. where she was at a craft fair. And apparently a medium came up behind her and tapped her on the shoulder and said, Hey, like, I just, sorry to creep you out, but as you know, I think you should know that there's a, there's an energy that's following you. And this energy is a little boy dressed in a fancy blue satin and he's got red hair and he has a message for you. He wants you to know that he's sorry for the way he behaved and he wants you to forgive him. Hmm. What? And that was her last yeah. encounter. And that's usually by most descriptions of Louis, the youngest child, Louis the 17th, it was his method of dress was the blue satin, kind of an aristocratic, at least that's what it would seem like if you, on the surface. Um, yeah, th there were some events apparently that besides that one that happened and were attributed to Donald, like in, in their house, like them living together. Um, but there was nothing ever that Derek admitted that ever really kind of, he said that was something that he couldn't be explained some other way um he never felt he never felt he, you know he never got the i'm gonna burn this fucking house to the ground stuff yeah. i guess like <laughs> she was happy yeah she was happy she was content um so yeah i mean that's kind of I, I, hey listen i think i think brady nailed this when he said like the attention exacerbated everything the attention oh hey we're getting the attention but it was the attention that the 15 year old girl that was getting simple as that look at this guy's li listen to the donald's list of fucking demands Okay, he got a little bit fucking crazy when the parents, when this girl's parents tried to make her get a job. All right. Yeah, he did. Yeah. 
he got fucking crazy and wanted to burn the house down when he didn't when she didn't get her own room. So what did they do? They gave her their bedroom, yeah. the best bedroom in the house. Okay, he got fucking pissed off when they didn't want to buy her a pet hamster. Oh, yeah, I forget. <laughs> I forget about. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in ten minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.